Uh, Melissa Stark used to be the sideline reporter on uh, Monday Night Football and now a co-host on uh, NFL Game Day. with first. Uh, Oh, first? Yes. NF I know you're not up that early, No, I'm not. It's like you're up with, uh, with uh, Sterling Sharp. That's right. And what's it called? It's called Game Day First. Game, game Day First. And yes. today is the 10th anniversary of the start of the NFL Network? It is. Okay. And I brought, you, I brought you a football to uh, commemorate Wait, it. Wait. Yes, let's see. Here we go. 10th anniversary of NFL Network. Well, why couldn't you get me a real size football? Why is it small? I mean, it's just what they sent me. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> well, well, that's... I want you to proudly display that. <laughs> wow. That, the size does not matter. It does not. Okay. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fritzy, you're not being spoken to. Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna. Fritzy, by the way, was not visiting me back in the green room. He was not. No, I do not know what he was doing, but I was all alone. <laughs> but he was waiting for you. Uh -huh. I wanted yeah. to, but you made it very clear to uh, stay away. Yes, I did. All right. Um, now, when you're watching the game last night, as a former sideline reporter, you see what's going on. Gary Kubiak mm -hmm. is on the on the field. What, what instincts do you draw upon with something like that? When you're trying to report on it, you really don't know if this guy is dying right before your very eyes here. Right, right. I mean, I think that's, that's uh, the case with any, as a reporter, you, and we know very well, you don't jump to any kind of conclusions with things. I mean, you don't want to speculate about it, anything. That's about the worst thing you could do. But, um, you know, I think just being down on the field, and obviously Michelle Tafoya did a great job, um, covering the story, being down the field is chaotic and frenetic enough at, at, and then going into halftime in those types of situations. Because as you know, the crew, uh, everybody sort of disperses at halftime, hard to find anybody. And um, you just, your reporter instincts kick, o kick in and you just, you talk to anybody you can and just try to figure out, you know, what's going on. Obviously a very, very scary situation. And You ever go through anything similar to that? You know what? Uh, right after 9-11, that was when I was... Uh, reporting for Monday Night Football. Uh, we were uh, covering a Redskins game. So we were in Landover, Maryland. And in the middle of the game, players started throwing up on the side. Somebody had sprayed something. And players, they started evacuating. Players started throwing up on the sideline. I don't know if you remember this. But, um, I mean, it was, pretty, it was pretty scary because people were leaving. And I was expected to stay, you know, in the middle of the field and, and come down. And granted, those guys, I, I worked with the same guys that you, you guys now work with, Fred Gadelli, Drew Esikoff. I mean, it's just top rate uh, guys. And they, you know, they came down to me and I think Michelle Tofoy was out of breath last night. I was out of breath during this and, and, and you could physically, you could smell whatever it was. It turned out that it was um, pepper spray, but especially after nine 11, nobody has any idea what's going on. So everybody's freaking out and the players are throwing up. Wait, and who, who's spraying? One of the, a fan, someone in the stands got in a fight and sprayed it, but it was towards one end of the bench and, um, you know, kind of carried with the wind down, down the line of the players. And uh, the hardest part was as the reporter expecting <laughs> to stay out there, <laughs> you know, amidst it all. Did you start to choke? Oh, I definitely did. I mean, you, I felt burning, you know, in my lungs. I definitely did. And, um, but I mean, your instincts as a reporter is not to leave the situation. It's to stay there, to cover the story. Um, you know, I mean, there's a lot of stories people have covered and put themselves in um, si certain situations. And that's, that's sort of all you're thinking about. But you, you being a sideline reporter and you're trying to get it like an interview, you're trying to grab somebody mm -hmm. or you're trying to, how, how physical does it get as a sideline reporter? Because we don't see that. Right. But I know that there has to be some physicality to try to do your job. Sure. To, to get in there well, and I grab thought, somebody. I, I, I will never forget. I was covering the Super Bowl um, and it was Raiders Bucks and I was supposed to interview Jerry Rice right at the start of the game. And uh, he comes running out. And I'm supposed to run right after him and get him. And I mean, I couldn't run as fast as Jerry Rice. Let's just put it that way, right? So um, so he comes, the game is just about to start. He comes back to me. He's like, I'm ready. I go, no, 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 we missed it. I mean, you ran right by me and I couldn't track you down. Um, Fred Goodelli never lived, let me live that one down. But this, but is, this is already pre-planned. That, that was pre-planned. Right? Exactly. No, but, but it, you know, on a more serious note, to yes, to try to grab somebody. I remember... I remember a lot of times trying to run off, like Herm Edwards, there were certain coaches that were nicer about it, running off on the, on the sideline with them. Um, Herm would just say, you know, we don't have to run this fast. We can slow down. I'll actually talk to you, you know. And um, Who was bad? Uh, you know what? Uh, someone just came to mind, and I cannot, I just can't say that person. But, um, but. Uh, well, tell the story without the name. Well, there's somebody that is very friendly um, to me and that I currently work with now and that it, we joke about it, but was just, I mean, some certain people turn into different personalities during so halftime. And I, a coach or a It was player? a coach. No, it was a coach. So Steve Mariucci. 
<laughs> okay, that's the only coach I work with, right? Did I give it away? <laughs> no, but we are we are best of friends. But okay. he 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 had a different during during halftime. He became a different person. Um, you know, any question I asked was the dumbest question in the world. Um, you know, it was. Uh, but we 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 laugh about it now. Well, Sterling Sharp was a guy very difficult. Very as a player. difficult. Right? Very didn't talk right. to the media. Didn't like the media. But there are certain there are certain coaches or players that give off uh, a vibe like that. But they're sweethearts uh, behind the camera, and it may be misconstrued. Like Andy Reid at halftime of a Monday night game, I asked the 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 previous game the Eagles had blown let's say a twenty one point lead, and at halftime of this game they were up twenty one points. So I said, all right, get out. How are you going to avoid what happened last week? <laughs> and he goes, I can't believe you just asked me that, Melissa. You know, but I mean, it came across as, I mean, it was written about in all the papers the next day of, you know, A, how could she ask that? But of course you're going to ask that. B, um, you know, gosh, Andy Reid sure doesn't like this, you know, Melissa Stark, whatever it may be. But I, I'm the, the next time we were covering their game, you know, or, or maybe even call me that week, you know, and he was just like, you know, I didn't mean that that way at all. But yeah, we see the camera. We're seeing it this year. We're seeing um, the way the cameras pick up, you know, Des Bryant on the sideline or Tom Brady, what happens when, you know, all of his receivers drop the ball and the frustration that you see. There is a um, over, cover, not an over covering because I'm in the media. I mean, I guess you can never have enough cameras or never enough sound or whatever, but I mean, everything, everything is is caught on tape well, and, analy and analyzed. Yes, that that's, that's the key. Uh, Melissa Stark from the NFL Network, they're celebrating their 10th anniversary. NFL Network uh, started uh, 10 years ago today. But I, I wonder if the football ca fan wants everything. We want to hear everything, see everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering how much do we give before we're invading sort of that space of players that and coaches where you got to be fair to them to let them do their jobs. I know guys are going to say something, do something, feel some way, and we're catching you, and then we interpret what you're doing. Des Bryant was a classic example. Mm -hmm. We all assume what he was saying because he was Des Bryant. And, you know, I wasn't fair to him with the exchange I saw with Tony Romo. But then when you hear it, when, yeah. you, when you actually heard what he said yeah. on film, uh, you know, he actually looked like he was – Trying to get get an understanding. Yeah, actually, I I felt like he looked better once you heard what he was saying. Yes. Um, but you hear things. Are there times when you didn't report things that you could have reported because it would have put somebody in a bad light? I mean, I I, I, I listen. I think that there's uh, we all go through as journalists or reporters. Um, you may be in certain scenarios, but I mean, it is your job. I mean, it's technically your job, your duty to to report things. But I I think I think there are some things that people say obviously off the record to you. Um, that you're you're not going to report, but yeah, I mean, if you're if you're in a situation where it's unfair to the person to be reporting, well, I never understood why does somebody tell you something off the record? Have you ever told anybody anything off the record? No, because it's never off the record. Because you know what happens? That person tells somebody, and then and then they use it as a source, or, and then it's, it's yes, on the record yes, for that person. It's, right. it's on the record for them, but right. I, I I always wonder that when somebody says, "Well, off the record," right? Well, then why are you telling me it in the first place? Unless you want me to report on it or ask somebody about it. I don't know. I just feel like it's, I it's think, unfair sometimes. But I think going back to what you're talking about, um, uh, covering the athletes, hearing everything they say. I mean, I think it's it's incredible. Just just from my Monday Night Football days, I, I, I took some time off, you know, to have all the kids and start the family. And then now I'm coming back to NFL Network. And I'm working out of NFL Films, which is in New Jersey, which has all of, I mean, just everything that they have. Uh, all the games, all the, and then all these players wired for sound. I mean, it's 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 pretty incredible when, uh, you know, obviously that game, you don't hear what Des Bryant's saying if Rome is not wired for sound. Yes. Um, but I think the insight is pretty incredible. And we are insatiable. I mean, gosh, we have, you and I have talked about it. We've got all the Twitter. We've got all the, well, why you know, are you laughing? Because you just said you're insatiable, and then Fritzy <laughs> immediately raises his hand, and he wants to say something. The answer I'm not is gonna no. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not saying anything. Yes. you got to watch what you say. Okay. Yeah, just with Fritzy. Yeah. Right. Uh, by the way. Uh, you turn 40 next. Did you really have to bring that up? Well, you you told me. Right. Okay. Wait, did you tell me off the record? Well, no, I think you asked me if I could come on today or next week, and I said, well, next week is my birthday. And then you turn 40 next Monday. <laughs> You've said that a couple of times. Fritzy would like Got to make, it. <laughs> Fritzy would like to make you Cougar of the Week. Oh. Next week. Oh, wow. Possibly even sooner than that. <laughs> No, you can't do it before she turns 40. Will you tell me what that oh, entails? It's a few days. It's a good thing. What, and what does it entail? you got to be 40. You have to be a 40. To, oh, my goodness. To be a cougar. Wow. 
I knew I was dreading this birthday for some reason. Yeah, but there's, like, run down a list of the previous Cougars of the week. Oh, it's, it's, oh. A, it's a very flattering thing. Look at him, look at him going, go, oh, yeah, going to the, uh, oh, yeah. he's got a notebook, or are they pictures, or what are they, Fritzy? Well, he's got both. We have Jerry Ryan, Phyllis George, uh, just, uh, there's, uh, there's, there's, uh, oh, no, give her some good ones. <laughs> uh, I mean, Phyllis George is 70. Hang on, I gotta go to my book here, all right. Uh, Catherine, no, no. Uh, Nev Campbell, Shannon Elizabeth. <laughs> Give her the good ones. Garcelle Beauvoir, <laughs> Rose McGowan. Is he, is he to the good ones? He, he's the good not ones? to the good ones yet. <laughs> he, he means this. He means this is a positive. That, okay. That you're turning. Christine Taylor. Forward. Maybe you know, Fritzy. We'll take a break, and maybe you can actually find some that are positive for Melissa. I don't Heidi wanna... Klum. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. There you go. Phyllis yeah. Diller. <laughs> Kate, Kate, <laughs> Kate, <laughs> Kate Beckinsale. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's some good well, ones. Well, I'm flattered. In there. Fritzy, Fritzy, I'm flattered. There you that's, go. That's a, you know what? Uh, the bottom Sims. line is thank you very much. Uh, but if you have to be 40, yeah, we've got to wait till next week. Yeah, so not next week, next, the week from uh, this Friday, Fritzy. Daisy Fuentes. Okay. Day, Daisy, okay, there you go. All right, uh, we'll take a break. Melissa is going to uh, stay with us. Then now, Fritzy wants you to cook today. Right. But I, I don't, I didn't want you to come in and cook. Well, I mean, I, I, you got all the ingredients? I just felt like there was a lot, you know, there's a lot of news going on in the NFL. I know. Oh, is that what you mean? Or you just didn't want to put me to work? Because, I mean, I, I feel like, we, you know, on our show, we've tried to, you know, I worked for the Today Show, and we try and keep it light. And yeah. Do you, so this is sort of a Matt Lauer moment? And you're Matt Lauer? I don't know. I'm probably more Al Roker than I am <laughs> Matt Lauer, I think. With all the running you've been doing. Yes, well, yeah, Al and I both, you know, we had that lap band stuff. You ride your, you ride your bike to, to work? <laughs> no, I do not. I do. Um, you know, if you want, I can I can try if someone's willing to help me out in the kitchen. Yeah. I don't mind. How about Fritzy helps you? Uh, Melissa Stark, co-host of NFL Game Day First every Sunday at 7 a.m. Eastern with uh, Sterling Sharp. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.